Right, while I've been away, the blinking door blew over in the wind. Blew over. Straight on my gravel drive. Big chip on it, flipping egg. Good job it's not a customer's door. Welcome, fellow painters and decorators of the interweb. It's Phil Beckwith. Bit of a product review. Phil Beckwith's back with a product review. And what product review are we doing today? It's actually a bit of a product that may be overlooked as an interior paint, an interior trim paint. Oh, I hate saying that word trim. Let's call it woodwork paint. You've seen the thumbnail. What we're going to talk about is Zinza's Allcoat Exterior. Now, you probably think, oh, it's just an exterior paint. No, it's far from an exterior paint. It's actually an interior paint as well. It's got a lot of properties that you might be well interested in to be an interior paint. It's got biocides in it. It's got all the bits and pieces that make it a good paint. It's flexible because it's an outside paint, but also it's very good for being an inside paint. It's mold and algae resistant. It's flexible. It's weatherproof. What's the main big thing? It's water-based. That smell, it's not got smells of oils, it's not a hybrid, it's not got that oily feel to it when you wash your brush out, wash washes out, clean water, bit of soap in it, fair liquid, well that's a brand, fair liquid, you know what I mean, washing up liquid, bit of warm water, brushes wash out lovely. So, and this is it, all coat exterior satin. Du, du, du. Got Doris the door. You've probably seen Doris the door a number of times, but today Doris the door is going to be painted black. So we're going to try all coat exterior black using. You'll just see over my shoulder. I've got my proper HVLP out. My stage five HVLP. Yeah. Can't even say it. Stage five HVLP. Tritech QT5. I'm going to be spraying this paint. Just slightly thinned. You don't need to thin it too much. And I'm going to use a 1.5 needle set. Now, we've spoke about, let's do a link there. I've got a link to setting up an HVLP, like what I've got. And just to refresh your mind, the smaller the hole, the less paint goes through it. The bigger the hole, the more paint goes through it. And that works as well with HVLP. So a 1.5 is quite a small hole. You can go to the 1.3s for lacquers and varnishes. But I find if you thin your paint down slightly, you might want that 1.5. If you want your paint a little bit thicker, you could go to your 1.8, which I've got, but I'm going to be spraying with a 1.5. And you can just see under my table, you know, my parkside picnic table that some people use for paper hanging yeah well then you can see the two sprayers that I've um, used previous weeks the one at the bottom's are uh, under 40 quid let's call it a basic HVLP you want another link to that it's just there 700 watt sprayer for under 40 quid it's actually not bad it's not in the same league as my QT5 but if you're just starting out in spraying, you might want to try that. Enough of that. I'm using my QT5, slightly thinning this, and we've got Doris the door that's coated up top to bottom in Bedeck. I've got some, I've got my table of paints. What I've got, I've got Bedeck just there on, just above, that's, I'm pointing to it. Bedeck MSP. And that's what that door was sprayed in using that 700 watt 40 quid sprayer from screw fix so let's not talk about it any longer i'm going to get some paint out put it in my um, suction pot there to be thinned down i'll just have a bit of a practice i'm going to coat that door up with two coats all coat exterior because i'm asking you have you actually used this inside it's it's a really good paint it is a bit of a paint that's a two coat process because it goes over anything. If you know about all coat exterior, it goes over most things, UPVC, the lot. Let's put an asterisk next to the UPVC because there's a lot of talk that you need the water-based one, two, three, well, bullseye primer before you put it on. But really, in theory, this goes over anything. 
I'll put that in brackets, goes over anything. Always read the label, it says there. Now for me, this is a brilliant paint. Why am I saying it's a brilliant paint? Particularly if you've got rentals or properties that you want a quick turnaround. Whether you're brushing or whether you're spraying, sometimes you can get away with this with two coats. Whereas the other paints that I've been testing, well, previous weeks, the gloss, that's been another project for me, testing water-based gloss paints. I've always been an undercoat with two top coats. I'll call it an undercoat, it's the undercoat primer, then two top coats. This should really go for two coats without any, any other primer. UPVC, probably need the primer. But I have tested it without and it does work. Enough about that. One of the main jobs we've used this on, and it was mixed to a colour, it mixed to a far and ball colour, because you can get them mixed to a far and ball colour. I used this in the matte finish, because you can get the matte, you can get the satin, you can get a gloss finish in all coat exterior. And what I did, I sprayed a grade one listed church, and it was the Vickers Vestry. I'll try and insert some photos um, so you can see me spraying it. But that was used through HVLP, spraying all the side wood panelling and you know where they have the outfits for the choir all the cupboard areas sprayed it with that it came up beautifully now your curing time well i say curing time recoat time let's call it a couple of hours it's probably touch dry in half an hour depending on conditions and it's probably cured let's be on the safe side seven days plus it goes to a rock hard solid finish really nice so try it it's also one of these paints that if you look on the Zinza website, it's, it's, spec, it's spec for some of the jobs that they've done on case studies. One in particular that comes to mind is the Churro Cathedral Old School House. Now that project was done all in Zinza paints and in effect, I did, a, ooh, I did exactly the same spec doing St. Mary's Church in the Lace Market, Nottingham the Vickers Vestry using all Zinza products. I've got plenty of confidence in this. But today, we're spraying up two coats over white with a proper, I call it a proper HVLP sprayer. We've got a nice hot sunny day. It's not too hot, but it's sunny. Got my cheap shades, just to protect my eyes from the sun. I'm gonna paint it, a couple of coats, and that'll be a black satin finish. And we'll kill two birds with one stone because that black satin finish for future videos will be a good base testing out water-based and other products, seeing how they cover over a dark colour. So um, I'm going to say this word without further ado, let me get set up and let's um, see how we go. I'm raring to go. Done a little bit of a sample test of what the spray fan pattern's like. I'm not going to go too wide, I want to keep it quite compact. Let's keep it quite compact. Now if I was doing this on a, let's call it a proper job, I'd be going, starting at the top, go horizontal left to right all the way down. Don't forget you still do your overlap, your 50-50 fan overlap. Once I get to the bottom and then I'd probably go top to bottom giving it that second coat. So. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to do two coats. What I'm going to do first coat is doing the horizontal overlapping, and then my second coat, which I'm going to try and get as my finished coat, so I can show you two coats over white with this black. That should cover, shouldn't it? My second coat will be top to bottom doing my overlap. So um, let's crack on. Now, a bit of housekeeping. If it was inside, make sure you got your mask on. If you need gloves. Safety goggles, these aren't safety goggles, these are me cheap Chinese copy Oakleys just to protect me from the sun. They're probably burning my retinas out because they don't actually protect my eyes, I don't know, but it's a nice day today. Got my shades on. Cheap, cheerful. But no, what I'm going to do, turn the machine on, I'll spray it horizontal, then top to bottom for the second coat. I won't do it all in one, we'll let that first coat dry. So, um, you know what I'm like. I will speed through it, zip through it, so you're not sitting through 30 seconds worth of spraying it all. That's how quick it can be.
Winner, winner, chicken dinner. As you'd expect, black. Should cover really for one. But we're still gonna give it two coats. It's actually gone on really nice. Now, if you've forgotten or you don't know, beauty of the HBLP is, it's quite a fine spray pattern. Now, if you've got your, I'm calling these ram, ram horns. If you call them something different, tell me. If you ram horns, horn, horns, horns. If you ram, ram, if these are across by horizontal, that means your fan pattern's gonna be vertical. You swivel that round, so they're vertical, your fan pattern's going to be horizontal. So you go top to bottom with that. Let me know that. Right, the other thing. That knob regulates your fan size. Now really turn it all the way down, you'll get virtually a pin pot, pin pot, pin, pin spot, dot of spray. You open it out, it goes wider and wider and wider. You probably get, I don't know, six, seven inches worth of fan pattern, depending on the distance that you're spraying from the surface. That's something else I mentioned. The closer you are to the surface, the more paint's gonna go onto it. The further you're away, you're not going to put so much on. Also, you've got more chance of the wind blowing because I had a little bit of wind blowing around that. It's not too windy today, it's quite nice. So, um, gauge it what suits you. Sometimes you have to spray a little bit closer to keep control of your fan pattern. Enough of that. Knob on the back. Turn it all the way in will restrict that handle going back, which stops the paint coming out. Now, with HVLPs and these sorts of spray guns, it's not like airless. You have got a little bit of tolerance at the beginning that if you actually pull it back, I've got the machine turned off, so I'll pull it back. I'll just have the pressure in the pot. It will let air through before you pull it back a bit further and let paint through. So if you've got a surface that's got a little bit of dust on it, like I just did there, I could just see a little bit of a spider crawling across it on the door. I just pulled the trigger back just to release air through the air cap just to blow off anything. So I'm gonna do that, I'm just gonna pull it back slightly. There's no air in the pot, but you get the idea. So you pull it back slightly, that releases air, pull it back a bit more, then your paint comes out. So that knob there, if you dialed it all the way down, nothing will come out. The more you dial it back, the more paint goes through it. So if you feel you've got too much paint coming out, that shall end, and you're putting too much paint on, you can turn it in, or turn it tighter, and that will stop more paint going through it. And again, regulate that as you need. The next thing you've got to remember is, sometimes you, let's take that on. That's your airflow control on a QT5. That's fully open at the minute, so I've got full air. Now, I've only done a door. It didn't need to be complicated. If you find you've got too much air going through and you're getting a lot of bounce back, and you've got more overspray, just turn that slightly. You only want a fraction and it reduces the force of the air through into the pot but depending on your paints that you're using you might have to have it fully open or just turn it down slightly that is a bit trial and error if you feel you're getting loads of overspray just turn that down slightly you'll be surprised how much of a difference that makes right give you the basics of that paint's really nice that'll be drying quite quickly now I won't say I've got misses it's just around the bottom I didn't go down as far as I really wanted to because I've got the pot in the way but once that's dry, and that'll probably be dry within 20 minutes, I'll come back and give it the second coat. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go inside, get a pina colada, go and sit out on my patio, watch paint dry, literally, I'll watch the paint dry, and I'll come back and we'll give it the final coat, and we'll give a bit of a review. But I know what this paint's like, I've used it many a time. I've actually used black on previously powder coated metal gates that a customer thought they were going to be paying for repowder coating. I did a bit of a sand down, give it a key, repaired anywhere that had got a bit of rust, chipped it back, got some car body filler, well, primed it first, metal primer, car body filler, sanded it down with the murker, and then sprayed it three coats of that, and the customer was over the moon with it because he thought it would be paying big money to get these gates removed and get repowder coated, well, for a fraction of the cost. Oh, don't forget, I don't come cheap, but for a fraction of the cost, he's had these big metal gates sprayed, with all coat exterior black and they look spot on. Really pleased with it. So, I'll go and get my drink. See you later. I'm back, second coat time. I've had my pina colada. 
aka Phil Beckwith, the teetotal person who only drinks Pepsi Max, Coke, stuff like that. So no pina colada. Right, while I've been away, the blinking door blew over in the wind. Blew over. Straight on my gravel drive. Bit of a chip on it, flipping heck. Good job it's not a customer's door. But anyway, we're back with it. I'm gonna get the sprayer up and running. I'm gonna give it the final coat and we're gonna go up and down this time instead of horizontal left to right. Let's make sure your air caps the right way around. But do you know what? As you'd expect, black's nearly covered and it would do. It's just a little bit of, you know, I'll say misses. I swear I've probably gone a bit too quick. But when you are spraying with HVLP, it's not like airless, you can blast it out. You've got more control with the HVLP, so just take your time with it. Don't go too slow, because you don't want to put too much paint on when it's running, but you've got a little bit slower action with it. It's not very fair, because I've probably speeded you up when I've done it, but a little bit of slower action. But let's, let's get on with it. beautiful it's lovely to spray with HVLP I know folks say oh it's the speed but actually the finish of HVLP is really nice it's quite it's a good I'd say if you're getting into spraying don't just jump straight in it airless probably hone your skills on HVLP you'll really appreciate the quality that you can get from HVLP whether that be spraying your woodwork your doors kitchen furniture we're not going to say trim call it woodwork um, cabinets anything like that really nice to use because you've got a bit more control if you're struggling with a um, spraying with airless because you're putting too much on because you're not understanding the tips and the filters and bits and pieces like that and pressure HVLP start with that you'll understand it a bit better it just gets you into it but that door it's gone lovely top to bottom two coats I had a red door I want to paint it black but a white door I want to paint it black so uh, let's give that 10 minutes. At the moment, that looks quite shiny. It looks like a gloss door. We're not wanting a gloss door. It'll be a, a satin finish. And on that note, I can hear my wife coming back in the Subaru. Might be a bit of a break. I can hear my wife coming back down the road. She's got a big exhaust on her Subaru. Might rack it. Chaftastic on a council estate. Let's not even go there. Satin black, it's beautiful. What well, a lovely finish that is. Not too shiny. It's not it's not like a flatter finish like an eggshell. That'll be the next one down, be a matte finish. But this, let's zoom in on. Probably can't see, but that's a satin finish of Zinza, all coat exterior. I'm just looking at it while I'm looking at you. That's cracking. Two coats, as you'd expect, no problem covering with that. It's it's really like an MSP paint, multi-surface paint. Goes over most things, cladding, oh, I don't know. Glossy surfaces give them, always give something a bit of a rub down. I gave this a little bit of a lighter braid before we sprayed it, so it, it sticks. If you're doing like house flips, rentals, or just where you want a quick turnaround, consider Zinza or Coat Exterior. It isn't an exterior paint. You can use it actually inside, and it's water-based. Can't get any better than that. Have you used it? What do you think to it? I'm impressed with that. I've used it a number of times. My own rentals, I've used it because it's a two coat process. A lot easier than the undercoats and two top coats like a lot of the water-based paints are. But for me, I know this is black, 
I've done it black for a reason. I had a white door, I want to paint it black, I told you before. Because I'm using this black in the future as a base for testing paints out, white paints. So that's why I've done this in black. But as they say on those reels, everything is content. So me painting this black is a good, good little video for you. Try it out yourself, see what you think. It's not cheap. How much is Zins Oil Coat? 60, 70 quid a tin. Contact your supplier, see if you can get it a bit cheaper. But it's a, it's a good paint to use. So even if you are using it outside on fascias, under eaves, soffits, barge boards, yeah, consider this as a, an option for water based paints outside. And as I said earlier, I've used this on um, powder coated gates. It's a good finish. Right, over and out. I'm going to stand to this side. If you like the content that I'm giving, please give us some feedback. I'm going to stand here because I can go like that and like that. There's some links to some other videos that I've done. Like that and like that. Support the channel. It's not the subscribers. It's all to do with people watching the videos. And if you're watching the videos, it's obviously because you like it. So, another one there and another one there. I'll see you on the next one. Love you all.